morning, Glory. How are you? I am fine. I hope you are the same. Welcome to my studio. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. If you have any questions or would like to leave a comment, you can do that below. You can also contact me through Facebook or through Twitter. I've listed those links below. Today in the studio, we're going to do a little bit of glazing on the faces. I hope you enjoy it. Okay. So Alright, so today I am glazing the bisquare. Uh, this bowl was created for an order and um, we put the wrong face on it. So we'll be offering this to one of the people farther down the line who ordered a bowl that the spatial features will uh, meet the request that they had. So although this is 731, we will redo 731 and make it into the correct face. So I have, with a pencil, drawn the eyes. First I drew the pupils to set the gaze, and then I drew the iris. And then I tipped the bowl up and I did a little tick mark there and made a little tick mark there and arched the line from the top to the bottom so that it has the same um, shape on both sides of the face. Making sure that I didn't make one come in too far or wasn't the same distance so it's about a finger's width from what is the side of the bowl. This one might be a little bit wider than this one but if it is it isn't by much and that will be corrected when I uh, start to glaze. So the first thing I do is I put on a, a base coat and usually the base coats are one of the browns or the ivories or sometimes tan, sometimes uh, a straw color, just depending. So since this is not um, uh, uh, the correct face, I'm going to glaze it just um, in a fashion that I think will be appealing. So. I use velvet under glazes, and they're made by Amico. And I apply the first base color on with a fan brush. And I go straight down that line underneath the chin, load my brush straight up that line tip my fan brush up, go up the side. So I've got the chin area I'm going to do above the mouth, load my fan brush, go in between all the teeth, making sure it gets all the way to the lip, and then I actually go over the lip with the base coat that way I know that I won't end up with a, a white line of area that was not glazed. So still using the fan brush, I'm just going to apply this base color of underglaze all over. And there are areas that I'm missing as I go across it, but I'm not too worried about that at this point. <clears throat> then I'm going to use a filbert brush. Always load your brush with water and that keeps the glaze in this case. Or if I was using acrylic paints on some other kind of a project that would fill the barrel up so that it makes the brush easier to clean. So I get some more of this base color and I get around where getting with the fan brush would have been a little too close and I might accidentally go someplace I didn't want like across the white of the eye. So then I go ahead and go closer to the nose. across the eye.
I'm gonna make sure I get it around the horn and in the cracks that I've made off the edge of the horns. Okay. <coughs> so that was the, and I have all my underglazes already open so that I can get to them. And um, I've, I've used them so much, I know the colors are, I usually have them in a certain location, but they're kind of all mixed up for right now. So I'm going to, um, so that it's just not solid one color, I'm going to break it up and put it an additional color up here. So I think this color I'm going to use will be this deep yellow, since this is kind of a monstery, more kind of a monster face. I'm going to use some good color on him. And even if I had decided later on that I wanted the horns to be whiter, I could wash the underglaze back off. But what I want to be sure is that I get it down in that crack. So now I have some of this underglaze on. And I want to blend it down. And by now, most of the glaze is off my brush. So I'm just sort of dry brushing that color down. So that it's not, doesn't have streaks. I wouldn't be able to do this very, very well if it still was loaded with uh, glaze in it. So now I'm going to use a sponge. And this is just a makeup sponge. And I go around the edge and I tear all the little sharp edges off so that it doesn't put a line. And I'll show you over here where I'm not under glazing. That creates a line and that creates an irregular pattern. So if I was trying to stipple with that, I would have those series of lines. And I don't want lines at this point. At some times, I do choose to do the lines. So I um, have a little piece of acrylic that I use to mix and put glazes on. And I have just a little palette knife and I can put the underglaze on the acrylic palette. I can wipe it off on the sponge. I can pounce this and then I can begin to pounce the underglaze to start the direct decoration. And I want to be real careful to get up across the top. And you'll notice that there's already other underglazes on there from when I had glazed before. So I will wet my sponge. I'll pick up some of those underglazes. So that it's just not... Um, sand dune and deep yellow. So I'm now beginning to bring in some other colors sort of subtly. So I have some of this purple that I had on there and some of the lilac that I had on there. Then I might come over and pick up a little bit of the green that's on my palette and go over the eye. Okay, now I'm going to use a filbert brush again and I haven't used this one. So I'm going to use the peach under glaze. Load my brush. And I like to use peach on the nose because it's not real bright. Um, it's not real pink. Sometimes I use a, a tan or Sometimes the noses are green. It just sort of depends on the feel that I'm trying to do. So I have peach there out of the loaded brush. And since this brush now doesn't have as much glaze on it, I can go over and go under the eyes.
and then I can take this and the reason I picked this one is because I've used it to pounce before so you can see that the uh, bristles are kind of flared out and that way I keep the other one not used for pounce so that I can have cleaner strokes with it. So I'm sort of softening that edge so we don't have just a stroke. And then around the nose, I want to soften that edge because I don't want just the color on the nose. So I sort of fade it up. And you'll notice down around the bottom of the nose is where I did it last. So now this just has a subtle uh, peach color under here. And now I'm going to glaze the area above the eye, the eyelid, which sometimes I define more. Um, let's give him a bit of a green. This one is light green. So I tip my bowl upside down and I get right up to the white of the eye. The clay that I use to throw the bowls and to sculpt the face is stoneware fired to cone 5-6. And the clay, clay that I use for the eyes and the teeth and the horns is a 5-6 porcelain clay. So the porcelain will give me a real white eye. It'll give me bright teeth that I can either leave bright or dingy up, depending on the face that I'm doing. So now he's got the, the green, and I sort of stipple out the edges of that using the side of the brush. And then my sponge is still loaded, and I load just a little bit more and I stipple over that brush stroke so that it no longer looks like a very distinct brush stroke. And then I usually stipple just a little bit on the bottom of the nostrils. And now I'm going to pick a color for the horns. And I'm going to pick the beige. Making sure that it gets down in the cracks. a little bit more beige. It already has some color on there so I don't have to worry about it being just one color. But as that dries I'll come back and stipple a little more on it. So the beige that's on my brush I unload on my palette by dragging it and twisting it and then I dry it off on this wet rag which cleans any extra glazes there. Now around the eyes, a lot of times I use salmon for the lower eyelid. When I sculpt it, I make sure that the eyelid goes all the way to the eye so that there's not a big gap. It's one of the last things I do when I sculpt is clean up the eye and make sure that it has an actual lid on it. So it's like a human eye in this sense, or an animal eye. So where this pink went up there, I just take it off. Come here, maybe bring this down a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to use keep my brushes over here where I like them. <coughs> now I'm going to use the same kind of a brush, which I think this one is a 20 aught. I just get these at the where I buy my clay or glazes. Sort of worn the numbers off, but anyway. If you need the numbers, you can ask me. I'll find them for you. Okay, so he kind of has um, a yellow and a brown and purple and green and that other green. So um, I think I'm going to put some blue eyes on him. So I'm going to start with 
a lot of times I start with iceberg blue which is a very very light blue just to put that base coat on first and I go all the way to the lid to make sure that I have a good coverage and try to keep a nice line right on the edge and this way if I have used the pink glaze too far over on the eye it'll now get blended in so that works really good <coughs> so they now have a base coat so now I'm going to pick up another color that um, this is a turquoise I'm going to put a little bit in each eye approximately the same place I'm going to pick up another color let's see let's pick up this avocado green and I'm going to put it down here I'm going to unload it on the palette pick up a little bit of water and then I'm going to blend this so that I don't have any sharp edges so now it's not just one color I might pick up a little bit more of the original base color to help blend it and then maybe pick up that's the color I'm using on the eye I'm going to offload it on my palette it's kind of like keeping a wet edge so that the colors um, blend into each other now you can see the avocado on the bottom you can see the turquoise up here and you can see the light blue and this avocado we're going to blend that edge and we make sure we don't leave any brush strokes so now it's sort of blended back and forth And then I use a much smaller brush. That's a 5 aught. Maybe that other one isn't a 20 aught. I'll have to look it up. So I had a little bit of glaze on the ferrule, so I pulled it off of my rag and twisted it. I'm not a fan of stabbing the bristles into the thing. I put them in here and I swish it, but then I clean my ferrule off that way. Okay, so now I need a dark rim around the eye. And I've used turquoise and I've used iceberg blue and I've used avocado green. So I want a color that's really going to be strong uh, so that that line will show. Um, so I may go with a, a brown. It's a medium brown, a red brown.
So I cleaned glaze out of my brush so now it just has water in it. And I want that edge to be a little bit more crisp. So I just blend that. Like here where it looks a little thick. I just blend that. So now that it's a, a better end Then I uh, usually do the dots in the eyes last, or I do the eyes first, because the dots are really better if um, the glaze on the brush is kind of sort of dried on there. So just so you can see how I do it, I'm dipping it in the glaze several times to make sure that I have a good amount and it's sort of become thick. So I know where I had originally put my pupils by the outside lines on the eyes. So and I decide how big I want the pupils to be that will help to to determine a lot of the expression. You try to get them around. Sometimes a little tiny pupil is good. Actually this brush has a it has a bend on the end of the hair's bend, so I don't like that one. I would like this one better. I'll clean that green out. And then I'll load this brush. So you can see that's thin. That's a little thicker. It's a little thicker. So you can put it in the middle and you can actually make there's a little water left in there. You can see it's starting to puddle around it. Usually this is loaded real well. It's just a matter of a dot. I'm going to try to pull some of that water back off. By drying the water out of my brush onto my wash rag, I was able to pull that water back up. So I'll load it again. Now there's no water drip in there. And I can always go back and touch it up when I'm finished later on. <coughs> so now we're going to do... That's a lot of washing out of the black, so that's why I just do them all at once instead of... A few here and a few there. So um, the lips, um, if it's more female, then I usually do salmon or uh, salmon with a little bit of light red in it. If it's a male lip, I usually do salmon with a tan in it or uh, a light pink. And I mix those up so that I have them ready. Another brush that had the little hook in it, it'll be fine for doing the the lips. So we're going to give this one what we call just non-gender mouth. Seems like it has a little bit of that black mm -hmm. still left in it. So we'll wash that black out. Now 
I will get it on the base of the tooth. And if this had had a mouth, the uh, glaze that I used the inside of the mouth is a mixture that I use with uh, rose or rose mauve and a peach and a tan and a medium brown. And I use it so that it's really watery so it'll get back behind the teeth. And I use a liner brush. So we have some that are inside of the mouth and three options for uh, lips and then the female lips so that when we're glazing it's already mixed and ready to go. Now when this one was sculpted the bottom lip was not really defined but you can pretty much guess where it should be. And I don't always define them real well because not every face has to have a defined, defined lip. So I have the base coat on and I want to make sure that I have a sufficient amount of glaze and I want to make sure that I'm not leaving streaks. And I want to make sure that the edge is crisp. And make this edge crisp. Okay, so now I'm going to clean the teeth off and I'm going to clean up the edge of the lip just with clean water and make sure where like I got the tan or the lip color up there or didn't get it quite far enough or this is rounded and I want it to be more straight. This is where this little bit of cleanup makes the difference. And then on the tooth, I brush down towards the gum or up towards the gum, depending on top or bottom teeth, to make sure that that solid line of glaze is no longer there. So even though it does leave a little bit of glaze on the tooth, that keeps the tooth from being stark white because most people don't have stark white teeth. <coughs> and most creatures probably don't go to the dentist and get their teeth whitened. So a little bit of color on them doesn't bother me at all. And most people don't see them. See that color? In fact, I've gone back and said, okay, this is kind of a monstery guy. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of this dark green unload my brush I say okay we're gonna give him some dingy teeth so we're gonna go back in here with a little bit of green and we might pick up a little bit of this orange unload the brush And I'll go in with the water on the top so that there's not a sharp edge. So it's just blended up. So he has some dirty teeth. And when this gets glazed, you won't hardly see that. So, um, wet my sponge. Pick up some of that dark green that I just put on there and a little bit of the brown. Pounce it quite a bit. Since I used this on the teeth, I thought, well, I'll just stick a little bit up here on the forehead. And sometimes I tip my brush on the side so I can go down the side. Sort of makes the face seem more rounded when it's glazed. 
and finish. And then I'm going to pound some of this dark green on the horn. And then I'm going to take... Um, with all those colors you have across the forehead, what keeps them from getting muddy? Um, they dry before I put the next color on. Like this is already starting to dry. The bisque wear uh, pulls that moisture into the uh, piece. And um, this is almost dry now. So if I, because I'm pouncing, um, it's layering it instead of mixing it. Because if you mix too many colors that you are right, it just, just becomes a, a grayish mud look. So the red, that's bright red. How about that red? Is that just red? No, nope, that's radiant. That's red. Okay, I use red for the inside of the nostrils. Do the inside of the hole. That's all the red we use for now. So we usually have one brush that just has the red in it. And that way we're not um, just rinsing this glaze out into the bucket all the time to the water. So um, that's a cute little face. I could do other things. I could put, you know, little freckles on him. Uh, sometimes what I like to do so that he's not just so white or just so one color. You can see the palette. I will stroke my brush across that a couple of times. And because I didn't mix it, you can still see the colors that are on the palette. It will lay just down the slightest little bit of color. This is the same brush I used to lay the original base coat on. So just make it wet. There's some blue. I'm going to come down through here with the light blue. And it will, it doesn't show much, but it's just a nice, subtle addition of a little bit of color. So when it dries, you'll be able to see that a little better. And then I will take the filbert brush again. And so I may say, okay, what else would I want to do? Um, I'm going to pick up this purple. Going to come down the laugh line. Sort of blend it in. So I added a little bit more purple in there. I might come in here and Pick up a little bit of that turquoise, make sure it's diluted down, and just add a little bit of that someplace. And because it's fairly diluted, it just adds just a hint of color. So that's going to be pretty cute. So you can see now this isn't that stark 
one color. It now has some of the little bits of the other color that I brushed across. So now he's much cuter. All right, that's that guy. On to the next. Okay, we're going to start again. Are we recording? Yeah. <laughs> it's good. I didn't say what I wanted to say about those frappin' rose bushes. Through Facebook or through Twitter? Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll twit you. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> or if you want, you can contact me through Facebook or through Twitter. And those links are below. <laughs> I can't say Twitter. Contact me through Facebook or through Twitter. <laughs> and those links are below. <laughs> <laughs> we will edit a lot or I will kill you. <laughs> you will be worse than grounded. <clears throat> Good morning, Glory. I don't have to yell, do I? No. All right. And if you want to. No, thank you. Do you sound excited? Are you excited about being here? I'm excited. <laughs> Jazz hands. Lots of editing. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have pizza, bring it over. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I would never make a news anchor. That's it. That's all. Blah, 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 blah.